Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com. This is Trading Simplified. So what are we going to talk about? Well, this week is going to be a lot about what I actually do or our follow-up on that and the methodology and action. And one of the things I want to talk about last week was where the money is and how to get there through proper money management. And that's pirate profits. And that'll make a little more sense. And one second, I... Checked in on Twitter, something I don't do very often, but I plan on doing it more often now that, since I've checked in. Some, some of my problems with social media is if you talk about trading or something along those lines, these critics just want to kind of beat you to death and grind you down. And they don't understand that I do show things that aren't in hindsight. And that was one of the arguments. So it got me to thinking, well, I'm going to show my next 100 trades, warts. And uh, well, that'll make a little bit more sense. Also, we had an opening gap reversal example this week, and that was not in hindsight. Just FYI, I wanna, it just happened to happen on Monday. And housekeeping, I do take requests. It makes my job a lot easier if you tell me what you would like me to cover. If I can't fit it in to this venue, I do a show every week on Thursdays. In fact, those shows are still live, unlike this show, which is recorded. You can attend live. Go to daylander.com slash webinar and register even if the link is old. I probably should just take the date out of that to avoid the confusion. I actually had to look up my Twitter handle, <laughs> at Dave Landry, T-R-D-R. -R. Not the best Twitter handle in the world. Although I did see someone who had one amid your shed, and everybody kept replying, I checked my shed. You're not in there. But anyway, I digress, that poor fella. If you would like the slides to this presentation and all my other presentations combined, go to davelander.com slash stock charts. Put your information in. I'll send you all three of my books in PDF format, limited access to the members area, a market timing course, and a plethora of other stuff. Get to know me first, and then if you like what you see, then follow up. If you do need to reach me, davelander.com slash contact. It makes my job a lot easier knowing what I would cover ahead of time. I can't cover it in this venue, which is a little bit limited. I can cover it in my webinar on Thursdays. Dave Landry's The Week in Charts. And I'd love to have you there live. And it's a lot of fun, believe it or not. <laughs> so I want to talk about where the real money is. Now, we ran out of time last week, so I want to follow up with this. And this relates to getting in for the swing trade and holding on to those trades longer term. And it gives you an idea as to what my mindset is and why it is conceptually correct. Anyway, if your entry is here, and again, we're just trading a pullback for most of the stuff we do, and the stop is down here. Let's say that's 1x. So we're risking x, 1x, and we're actually going to take partial profits. That IPT means initial profit target when we're up 1x. So let's say we risk two points on this trade. When we're up two points, we're going to pull off half of those shares. And at that point, our stop has trailed up to break even. And then we will stay with the trend as long as we can and ideally make many x, many times what we originally risked. And what we will do in order to help make that happen is gradually loosen up this stop to give it a little bit of breathing room and should this longer term trend continue what we're doing is letting things widen out to adjust for the longer term volatility of the market as i say quite often if you go in with the goal of the longer term trade only you're going to have to have a super 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 wide stop and also your accuracy isn't going to be that good now, this was sent to me last year, and I do have a YouTube video which is covering this in a little bit more detail. So if you go to www.youtube.com slash C slash Dave Landry, and you can search for Pirate when you get there, you'll be able to access this longer presentation on this. But anyway, what I want to give you here is a bit of a thumbnail, and this is going to help set up the next 100 trades that I show here and my thinking in the money management. So somebody was asking about R, and I'm like, is that risk versus reward? And they're like, yeah, if you risk a thousand bucks, that's one R. So if you're if you make twenty five hundred dollars on that trade, 
that's 2.5 R. Now, in theory, that sounds fantastic. So let's break that down. So let's say you're trading a pullback. You enter here. And your risk down here is going to be 1R, okay, if stopped out. Now, if you take profits up here at 2.5R, okay, like we just said, risk 1,000, make 2,500, that sounds fantastic. Unfortunately, it sounds great on paper, but in reality, it doesn't work that way. The world, as you know, is a lot more complex, especially when it comes to trading. So statistically, a 1x adverse move, in other words, getting stopped out, is 2.5 times more likely than a 2.5 move in your favor. Plus, 1x is not your max loss. So let's say you're risking one point, and you come in tomorrow, and the stock gaps down 10 points. Well, you've now lost 10x. So the way I get around that is I trade for unlimited gains and limited losses. Now, there's always a chance of a, a, a loss bigger than 1x, like we just said. But at least we get the occasional home run. Now, this slide's a little dated. It's from last year, but I will be showing the current portfolio live when we get to the live trades over the next however long it takes me to do 100 trades. And those are going to be 100 core trades. I probably could do 100 intraday trades in a week. <laughs> but uh, you probably don't want to see all that. But anyway, so the original risk here was 1.6 points. And you can see that we ended up with 20 times that. And this eventually did stop out. I think it had about a 400% gain. But at this particular point in time, it was 20 times the original risk. And if we add in the rest of these, you can see in this case, it was 4.6 times the original, the reward that is, original risk where we are marked to market, okay? 75% gain and so on and so forth. And so you can see how that risk comes off with time plus you're also taking those partial profits off and i'm not sure if i added that into the calculations or not but that would probably make it look even a little bit better so the, the point i'm trying to make is you must trade for unlimited gains with limited losses all this textbook stuff sounds great but a lot of it is just in theory and doesn't work in reality so never trade for fixed gains Unless, of course, you're doing like a, an s and, G, an s and G type of trade or a day trade or something. And this is one that I did last year, last April, I guess. And I actually did one recently, same sort of action. You just go in for s and Gs and you're buying a whole bunch of options that are really cheap and short dated. And then you're flipping them out for, let's say, two times the profit. In this particular case, I flipped out half at over two times. And then I still had another 25 on, which I don't remember how it ended up. But the point is that if you're doing some kind of some sort of S G type of super short term trading, then maybe you could trade with some of this R stuff in mind where you're doing one to two or something like that. But you still need to be super careful if you're doing that. The real money, as I preach, is in the longer term trend trading. Now. I want to do a brief update on the market timing. This is the TFM 10% system. We did have a buy a few weeks ago, but I felt like it wasn't a good buy signal. I know if you're tracking this mechanically, technically that's a buy, and I will put it in a spreadsheet. But if you look closely, you got to look really closely, we did have Landry Light in the system to buy you just need two bars of Landry Light, lows greater than the 50-week moving average. This is the weekly chart. And you have to be above the buy line, which is 10% below the 50-week high. I've got plenty of videos out there on the TFM 10% system, so check them out. Either through Stock Charts channel or my own aforementioned YouTube channel. So technically, that was a buy. I ignored that signal because it did not fit the designer's intent. 
my intent with the Landry light and the close above the moving average and the close above the buy line was to be buying on strength and not on weakness. And let's say you did wait for some additional strength, maybe this high to get taken out or something like that, or at least this to close above the weekly open, then you're getting in a little bit higher, but not too much higher. So you didn't give up too much of that potential new trend in the works. Now let's take a look at where we are now. And you can see we closed below the buy line and we closed below the 50 week moving averages. All these can be plotted on chart FYI in uh, the stock charts ACP plugin. All you have to do is like this video and you'll get chart, you'll get you charge, you won't get charged, it's free. <laughs> and you can click down here to plug in and load my plugin. It takes about 10 seconds and you're good to go. Anyway, you can see this is more designer's intent, obviously. Big sell off and closing below the buy line and closing below 50 week moving average. Now, I would not question this sell signal, but a buy signal where we have weakness like this, plus the buy signals are a little bit more stringent. You have to have the Landry light, and if you squint your eyes, like I said, you, or you have to squint your eyes to see the Landry light there. So anyway, we're back under a sell, and that was at 42.89 was a re-trigger on that. I'm actually a little bit lower, wherever this close was, on the week ending of May, uh, I'm sorry, April 18th. So that would have been a sell there. So we're still, we're back to sell mode in the TFM 10% system. Again, because we closed below the buy line and below the 50 week moving average. Now, as I alluded to earlier, somebody accused me of cherry picking. And as I explained, almost every trade I show you here comes straight from my trading service, which is the mystery charts that I show. Those come straight from the trading service. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post my next 100 trades and it's going to have zero hindsight. Now this week's, because I haven't set everything up, I won't count the one I'm getting ready to show you, but it's going to have zero hindsight and they'll come straight from the mystery charts, which again, comes straight from my trading service, or they will come from Facebook post to Dave Landry's trend traders. That's my Facebook group. The group is free, but you have to be at least a gold member of DaveLander.com, and that just keeps the riffraff out. Now, <laughs> I'm kind of half kidding, but I've been involved with groups before, and as I may have alluded to with the social media, it just all becomes a bit of a lord of the flies. With this group, thank goodness, since everybody is qualified by being on the same page and having a little skin in the game, we've had a really, really, really good group. Not that we always agree, but there's none of this crazy Lord of the Flies action. So I'll show you everything warts and all. You want to see some losses? I can almost guarantee you, well, I can guarantee you, I'm going to have some losses with some of the next 100 trades. But I would hope and think at least that there'll be some pretty amazing gains. So I'm looking forward to that. I know you want to party with me, right? <laughs> so let's shift gears and revisit trading slightly more complex. One thing I like to do is trade the opening gap reversals. Now, they don't come along every day, which is probably a good thing because they probably wouldn't work if they did. But if you bide your time and you're really patient, they can work out quite nicely. So here's one from this week, NEX. Yesterday, you could see that it gap lower. It was at a really, really, really nice trend and had begun to pull back. So you definitely want... A, a trend, ideally an accelerated trend and a massive trend like this. And then you want to see that pullback happen, sort of like the core methodology or exactly like the core methodology. But what you're looking to do is get in on that opening gap. Should it turn into a bit of a reversal or should it show signs of reversing? So let's take a look at what happened intraday. So the stock gap lower and then begin to rally. Now this is a tough part in this setup. This is what I call the go or no go, and you have to be really, really careful. And I'm gonna show you in one minute a way that could help to keep you from getting too emotional and hopping in on that first bar. By the way, I use 15 minute bars, as I've said, ad nauseum. For my E-mini trading, I had 
five minute bars up and I found myself kind of chasing my own tail and by accident I switched to a 15 minute chart and I went like a whole week without a trade or at least three days and couldn't figure out why I wasn't trading and then all of a sudden I took a trade it worked I took another trade it worked and not all the trades worked but then I realized that you know what Dave you were you were getting too caught up in the flickery ticks as Dave Keller talks about from Todd Harrison that's a Todd Harrison saying now, by the way, one thing that can be a little tricky, people ask me all the time, they say, hey, Dave, why don't we just avoid the first 15 minutes? Well, the only problem with that is this thing might do a complete reversal in 15 minutes. And markets can move a long, long ways, as you probably know, in 15 minutes. So that's where that go or no decision becomes really, really tough. Now, you can see it did begin to implode on that 15-minute chart. And at this point, I'm thinking, I just missed a trade and by the way one thing you could do too is if it does start to come back in you could put an entry right above the high and that way you're only triggered if it comes back and in the meantime you can go about your life now let's take a look at what happened you see it, it went a little bit lower they started trading sideways and basing out at this point my thinking is okay it's found it's low let me look to play an intraday breakout which it did right here so I bought 1,000 shares. I did this across multiple accounts, but I just want to show you this one account where I did this, just so you can see the actual trade. Now, the risk, I decided it was going to be a half a point, so my stop is down here, which put the initial profit target up here. And if we take a look at what happened, and as you can see, trail was stop during the day. Now, I did get an alert that it was getting pretty close to the initial profit target, and by the time I got out, the trade had begun to erode or the, or the stock began to come begin to come back in a little bit. So I didn't get as much as I had hoped, but it was better than a poke in the eye. And then trailed the stop and ended up exiting the remaining shares near the close. So if you take a look at the trades, this is how it shook out. And again, I did take it across multiple accounts, but it was a thousand shares total and then flipped out at 10.04 and 10.08. And again, I was trying to get a little bit more than 10.04. I think it was about 10.17 was the IPT, which I didn't know it, it hit later in the day. So just being a little bit more hands-off in this case would have worked. I just didn't want to watch those profits evaporate. Now, probably didn't knock your socks off, making $400 on a trade, big deal, huh, Dave? Well, the way I look at it, I'm a big fan of looking at things on an annualized basis. If I could get one trade like this every day and make $400, that's an extra 100 k added to my account. And if I do that across multiple accounts, then I'll make a lot of money, right? Well, obviously, there's risk and losses of all, so it doesn't always work that well. But I'm not going to count this as my first of 100 trades. But from now on, anything that I mention ahead of time and again the Facebook group or in my trading service which if you want to become a member of both of those that would be great <laughs> if you remember the trading service you do get free access to the Facebook group soft little little soft sell there alright so here's a way to help not necessarily eliminate but help getting in too early instead of looking at that 15 minute chart take a look at a daily chart with these opening gap reversals and then say, okay, we open here. If you're looking at an intraday chart, like a five-minute chart, this right here, from here to here, is going to look like a huge move higher, and you're likely to get sucked in. One thing I will do sometimes, I'll look at a daily chart, and especially if I'm super busy, I'll just put in a stop entry where I think, okay, if it does reverse enough to get to that entry, then we might have a bona fide opening gap reversal on our hands. And if it begins to implode a little bit, then you can get, again, you can go in and put the entry right above the high. So when you come into the trade, you might have an entry up here. If it begins to implode, you can put an entry above the high. And if you want to be a little bit more hands-on, like I just showed, maybe you can look to catch that low-level breakout and get in a little bit earlier. Now, I've talked about this before, so let me just get, go through it quickly. You want a larger cap stock. That stock I just showed was traded on average of 3 million shares a day on a, I think, a 30-day average. 
So you sort of want a well-known stock or something that has a lot of volume. You need a lot of players because you want to make sure that people got knocked out of the stock. Maybe some shorts got sucked in. And then you want to take advantage of the predicament of those traders. And if there's a lot of players, especially if it's a very public type of name, then institutions that might have missed the boat and they, won't, they want to get in as cheaply as possible, they could rush in. On, an op on that opening gap. There's some things that happen with market makers, which a little bit more advanced don't want to get into. But a lot of times, especially back when the market maker, when they actually had market makers on the floor, what they would do is they'd bring that stock down, they'd open it down as low as they could, knowing that they'd have to buy it and then try to flip it out later. So that's one way of thinking about it. You're trading on the side of the, the floor trader. And the market makers. Now, now let's say an individual trader got knocked out of the trade and then all of a sudden it begins to reverse. He might jump right back in. So that's more buying. You could have some lucky shorts who came in short the market. They may be looking to cover or the shorts who missed the boat, so to speak. They might be piling on. And if this thing begins to reverse, they better get out of the way quickly or they're going to get burnt really bad. Which, if they don't get out of the way down the road, like later in the day, they might get forced out at much higher levels. And that could add a little bit of momentum. Now, you want to make sure your stock is set up to begin with and has strong momentum. So something like TKOs, pullbacks, etc. or a good pattern for opening gap reversals. Linda Rasky had a gentleman who spent a little time in her office at one point in time, and he would buy things as they were headed straight down, and he nicknamed them burning dogs. I strongly recommend you don't do that. Don't try to buy something that gaps way down. More likely than not, you're going to get burnt trying to do that. So I wanna follow up on something we talked about last week, and we talked about investing versus trading, and the way I look at it, again, if I can make that shorter term trade turn into a longer term investment, I've really, I've really beat the system and I hit it out of the park and do really, really, really well. And insert your favorite uh, <laughs> metaphor here. The point is, I stick with those investments, so to speak, only if they continue to perform. And my point is that through trading, a swing to intermediate term trader can find investment themes as they play out and not the other way around. And I think I talked about Academy last week. I talked about a coal stock that we're still long, ARLP. So just want to show you the portfolio. It doesn't quite look as good as the portfolio from last week. And I'm sorry, from the... Now, I just want to show you the open portfolio real quick. It doesn't look quite as good as that forty dollars or $50,000 open profit portfolio I showed you earlier from last year, but we're working on it. You can see we do have a few losses in here, so we do lose occasionally lose money trading. Unfortunately, it happens, spelled with a silent S-H. This is the RES, which is a former mystery chart, and unfortunately, we just got the initial profit target out of this, and then it stopped out at a small loss and remained. But overall, it's what I call the better than a poke in the eye trade. So here's the RES. We talked about this last week. Entry was here. Stop was down there, and this is what happened. It did get up to that, finally, and up to that initial profit target. Unfortunately, it came back in and stopped this out, and that actually happened on a gap. So we lost a tiny bit more than we intended. But overall, we did okay with that. And if you just, at worst, make a little money on a trade and then bide your time until you have big winners, obviously you will have some losers. But if you get a few of these mixed in with the losers, it'll help to cover those losses and bide your time again for when the big trend comes along. So unfortunately, the position where we were free rolling stopped out. It didn't turn into a longer term trend, but what I say is next. <laughs> so I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this next 100 trades plays out. I am, at least initially, we'll see how long it takes, but I'm going to focus on the core methodology as much as possible. And I might occasionally throw in something like an opening gap reversal. I will avoid any other intraday trades, at least initially. And if we're not getting enough trades, then I might throw out a few of those, provided, of course, they make sense within the core methodology. 
Well, that's all I have. Again, if you need follow-up information, www.daveleonard.com slash stockcharts. If you need to reach me, daveleonard.com slash contact. I want to thank everybody for watching, and may the trend be with you. Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.